Hello, my name is Caterina Longo and I'm going to talk about the hairpin or looped vessels, a topic that I really like. If you want to know the definition, now we can take a look to Dermoscopedia on the website of the International Dermoscopy Society in collaboration with other partners and we can really check the correct definition. In this case, hairpin vessels has been defined as vascular loops frequently twisted and bending, usually surrounded by whitish halo. When we talk about vascular pattern in general, we know that we can have six different categories comma, dotted, arborizing, glomerular, linear, irregular, and hairpin vessels, as you can see in the D panel. And this has been nicely summarized in a review published by Iris Laudek uh, in 2011 on the Blue Journal. Vessels are really important in terms of morphology, but the second step is to look at the architectural arrangement of vessels. And it can be arranged as a regular, in a string, clustered, radial, irregular, branched, or irregular. And third, we need to assess four additional criteria besides vessel morphology and vessel arrangements. Another important consideration is that dermoscopy provides a horizontal view of the skin. Vessels are arranged parallel to the skin surface appear as lines, whereas vertically arranged vessels will be seen as dots or loops. And more interestingly, the prevailing vascular patterns strongly depend on tumor volume. And as you can see in this schematic uh, picture, we have the common hairpin vessels looking elongated and looped in dermoscopy and they belong to a tumor that is raised or even nodular. So we have a nine direct knowledge looking to the vessels about the tumor burden. Back to our topic, the hairpin vessels usually can be seen in squamous cell carcinoma in which they show this typical radial distribution and they are more, more frequently found in the so-called chirothocantoma, that is the well-differentiated squamous cell carcinoma according to the new uh, definition and they can be uh, arranged at the periphery. They can be surrounded by whitish background and usually in the center of the tumor we do have uh, centrally located scales or keratin crosses. And here we can see a typical example of these hairpin vessels located at the periphery of the tumor and surrounded by this whitish halo and in the center we have keratin mass. And as I told you before, we have a tumor that is raised and even nodular, exophytic. Now, again here what we see is the presence, uh, if we speak about purely morphology, vessel morphology, we see linear uh, hairpin vessels at the edge of this raised tumor. We see some white color and we see this centrally located yellowish mass. So if we do just think about vessel morphology and the central part of the tumor, our diagnosis is squamous cell carcinoma. But let's take a look to the clinical picture. And this is the clinical picture. This is uh, the skin of the abdomen, of the belly, of a 45 years old man. And this was a rapidly growing nodule. So we do expect to have a squamous cell carcinoma, usually in the head and neck area, in people showing severely damaged skin, with the actinic keratosis surrounding the tumor with a complete different uh, body side. And indeed, this was an invasive melanoma. So going back to our dermoscopy picture, we do have the hairpin vessels, the whitish color and the central yellowish uh, areas, but looking at 
carefully we can detect the presence of some bluish color at the edge here, as you can see highlighted by the arrows, and also the patient context is really important to understand that this could be a squamous cell, but most likely could be another tumor, and indeed it was a melanoma because it was arising on a young patient on the belly without some damage and showing also additional clues in dermoscopy. So be aware that the hairpin vessels alone cannot make the diagnosis of squamous cell carcinoma. Another clue when we speak about vessels and hairpin vessels, as you can see in this squamous cell carcinoma, here we see looped vessels with the whitish color being prominent and also the clinical picture fitting with this exophytic squamous cell carcinoma. Of note, usually the hairpin vessels are not in focus. And lastly, when we have the hairpin vessels here at the periphery, not in focus, surrounding by whitish halo, we also might have the presence of additional clues such as white circles that together with the vessels, uh, hairpin shaped uh, speaks in favor of a squamous cell carcinoma diagnosis. So to conclude, the key message is that vessel morphology is important to identify malignancies that are mainly hyperpigmented in which we do have very few clues, but additional dermoscopic and clinical clues are needed to further clarify the tumor's nature. Thank you.